local his 21st Century Local History Club. What might your name be? John Kegelein. Nice to meet you. in the middle. Nice to meet you. What was your occupation? Retired. Well, what did you do in your lifetime? Well, I started out as a farmer boy. Okay. Spent four years in the Marine Corps. Worked at Bethlehem Steel for four years, and I did a lot of jobs after that. What did you do in Bethlehem Steel? What type of work Cramp did you do? There. Okay. What did you do in the Marine Corps? I was a weather forecaster. What was that? So the people, whether they could fly their planes or not, what the weather was going to be, where they were going. Have you ever met a president or any famous person? Oh, I met you. You're famous. <laughs> well, <laughs> could you, like a president or something? I'm not a president. <laughs> well, I knew Congressman Paxton very well, and I know the one that we got now very well. How did they react to you when you first met them? They listened to me when I talked. Because I yeah. always got questions for them about what they're not doing for me. What kind of questions did you ask them? Where's my not your money from my Social Security? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> in case you don't know what that is, the man that was born in 1960 and I was born in 17, we made the same money in retirement. He gets $50 a month more than I do for Social Security. Congress did that. And why did they do that? I don't know. They do a lot of crazy things that we don't know about. <laughs> what historical event impacted your life? Pardon? What historical event impacted your life? Oh, boy. Being in the Marine Corps. Okay. Can you explain about that? Like, oh. Well, I enlisted when I thought it was time to go. And I went to the Pacific. I got as far as the Great Wall in China on the way home. And then they turned us around and made us come back. <laughs> so, saw a lot of China. What was Up China? Up in Okinawa. What was China like? It was poor. There was a lot of people and they were... Trying, everybody was trying to make a dollar fast. After World War II, there was a lot of service people in there, and the, uh, the Chinese themselves had three kinds of money. And then we landed at the airport at Pei, what was then Peiping, it's now Beijing. The nationalists and the communists were shooting at each other in the daytime, but they didn't shoot at night, they went to town. And we saw them around in some of the Chinese taverns and that. You were going to ask a question, Ms. Hutchinson? Yes, I'd like to know why it is that you got to China and they sent you right back home. Could you explain that better? I don't understand. Oh, it was, we, were, we were up there uh, with a basketball excursion. For, for first, second air wing was playing the first air wing. <coughs> I was referee in a lot of games in Okinawa and I went along as a referee. And we were very fortunate. We, this other fellow and I ran into a Chinese boy that spoke English. And his father was the third man in line to the Chinese emperor. His father went in the left gate, and the second man went in the middle, and the emperor in the middle. And the stuff that was in there is in there, and it's there today yet. I'm amazed that the Japanese didn't clean it out. Fabulous, fabulous jewelry, gold and tapestries and paintings. And just, just boggle your mind. So then you came back to the United States? Yeah. And you did not go to Europe? No. Nope, as part of World War II? No. Nope. Okay. Next question. Could you tell us a little bit about Akron? Well, Akron is my hometown. Okay. <laughs> I was born over on the Barnum Road. It runs from Main Street to the Clarence Center Road. <clears throat> Peanut Railroad went right through the farm. Saw a lot of trains on that. But we were in the Clarence School District, so I'm a graduate of Parker High School in Clarence. How come you but went? Our hometown was in Akron. How come you went to Clarence instead of Akron? It's the school district. Oh. Just like Akron has people from mm -hmm. Alabama and Indian Falls and that, like. Yeah. You know, okay. What year did you graduate high school? 34. 34? A thousand years ago. Oh, <laughs> no, it wasn't a thousand years ago. But
Any more questions? Sure. Would you like to tell us some of the um, historical points of Akron that you recall? <coughs> well, right behind our farm, the West Shore track, which goes through Akron down by Cedar Street, and the Peanut crossed. There was a stop and go sign there for the trains. There were so many of them. They were loading the, there was 12 sidings into the stone quarry there. They were loading, shipping stone out all the time to build railroads and roads and that further away where they didn't have any. And old Mr. Skilland, who lived right there on Bloomingdale a little ways, he was the, ran the stop and go sign. And my dad, my grandfather moved out here in 1900, and my dad and his older brother used to walk down the track to the stop and rest up there and then walk down the West Shore into Akron from the farm. It was about four miles. What do you mean someone had to run the stop and go signs? Explain that. Well, to, to keep the trains from running into each other. I mean, there was one was the big went this way and the West Shore came this way. They had to have timing. And that's why they had a man there working. <laughs> Get the switches going the right way. Because the, the stone quarry had an engine too and they were shoving the cars out to get pulled away by the trains that were going going through. Same way with the, the station here on the Clinton Street, on the Clinton Street. There were places there where you could unload load cattle and unload cattle. I, I bought a tractor when I came home and uh, came in a box car and I just drove it off to, to down the ramp and took it home. <laughs> <coughs> That was when the railroad was, uh, when the railroad station was by um, the Newstead Hotel? Yeah, across the street. Well, it was right, right on that side of the street, and the, the freight house was on the other side. What I else don't was know in when that the, area? I don't know when the, the station was taken down. So there was a station and a freight house. Was there anything else in that area? Not, not on the railroad track there, no. There was a crew that worked out of there that repaired the track in that. They had a little building where they had their sidecar in there, or whatever they called it. And there was a lot of hobos on the track in there. I can remember lots of them coming down the track, and they'd walk down to the house and want to chop a little wood or something, get a meal. My mother fed a lot of them. Of course, I had. It wasn't, uh, didn't, it wasn't really a rivalry, but all the fellows that were my age in Akron, uh, in my relation, and all the people I went to church and Sunday school with were playing for Akron, and I was playing for Parker, and there was always a little bit of a rivalry there, talking about that. What was your memories of Akron? Akron. Well, one of the first times I remember coming to Akron was in about 1922. When coming to the father and son banquet, my mother worked in the kitchen. My dad and I went to the banquet, and I sat in the middle. They had the horses with the bells on, and put the horses in the shed behind the church, and put the blankets on them. <laughs> I had a hot apple pie on my lap to keep warm. <laughs> <laughs> and on Saturday night, in them days, the bank stayed open till till 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock and a lot of the farmers came into town and they did their shopping and listened to the band concert and had an ice cream cone. And 4th of July was something else in Akron. There was no law against shooting firecrackers. Heck, the paper from the firecrackers and that would be two inches deep all the way through the park. And then the alley that runs down off of Clinton Street, every once in a while you'd see a man going down there, he was going down to Flexi Dixon Saloon to have a drink. <laughs> that, that's what they, what they called it. And But uh, trying to think of something, oh, the centennial that we had here in 49 or something else, that was a whole week long thing. We had a parade every day. <laughs> that was really something. Before the last parade was on Labor Day, and it was two hours long. Wow. We had out outfits here from Canada and all over. Did you have a beard? Pardon? Did you have a beard? Oh, certainly. <laughs> tell us, tell with us a, about With that. a lot of prominent people, I had beards. Was but there with a that contest? Centennial. Pardon? Could you tell us about the contest? Oh, yeah. The contest. The contest. That 
Oh, was it beard okay. contest? Or yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I got second place in that. My beard Good whiskers job. grew way down to here. <laughs> Good job. And, <laughs> and all I did is just trim them up here so I could eat. Oh. And they turned sort of a maroon color. They were pretty. <laughs> but uh, in order to get people to do things, uh, we had uh, Alex Smith, the big trucker, had a pet monkey, and the monkey died, and he had this cage they had him in, and it just fit in behind the pickup truck. So when the first uh, the centennial wasn't until Labor Day weekend, the band's concert started at the end of June. So there was about five of us that had whiskers and everything, and uh, we had the buttons made. The world takes what Akron makes, Gilly will be in modern. <laughs> and uh, they sold for a dollar. And we would captive, just go in and grab some storekeeper out and throw them in the back of the cage and run them around town and spray them with water and everything. And <laughs> it, uh, it was interesting. Uh, the people would be walking down the street. The guy, hey, here's my butt. Give me my button. I always had a pocket full of buttons. We paid for all the parade prizes for the, the beards and the costume prizes, just selling them buttons. Tell me what the button said again. A, do a dollar. The world takes what Akron makes. Gilly will be in modern. Illy will be in you, modern. That, that's, you didn't have any whiskers. Guilty of being. The way ladies had a dress in, in old fancy clothes. Well, and if they ever get it fixed, they've got a, a, a movie of that. Ted Stape took the movie of that, and uh, they, they printed it, and they printed it in the wrong speed, and I think Hoover's trying to get it fixed now. <laughs> that, that parade. We had, a, we had a farmer's parade. We had Cyrus McCormick's for first uh, Reaper in there, Bashu Ben the Young, the Adeeler, and... Uh, uh, oh. And Hoover Stapleton has that now? Pardon? Hoover Stapleton has that video? Ted Stapleton, no, Hoover's got it, Film? yes. Hoover or, I think Jim might have it by now. They're trying to get it uh, redone. And we had a 19-3 Oldsmobile. Court Tinkham was a dealer up at 5, up at 93 and 5. And we stole that and put it down on the steps of the heaper. He put her had white hair and worried about where his automobile was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, unofficially, well, where the Catholic Church is, from there, that my two big fields were parked full of cars, and we bust them into town and way down to the creek where the VFW is. Bust them. Uh, they said there were 30,000 people at Akron on Labor Day. <laughs> you couldn't move. You couldn't get a. A glass of water with ice in it or anything. Just, everything was cleaned right out. And we were one of the few towns that made money on their centennial. Most of them hired people to put it on and uh, run it at a, at a cost. And we didn't. We did it all ourselves. Some two of the ladies uh, wrote the pageant and they had portrayed everything that happened in the community from the time when it was first started. It was part of a, the big town of Clarence and then it became Newstead, named after a the new said Abbey in England. And the town team played baseball. They played on the reservation. They played up on the end of John Street in Madison. That was all open there. That's where the Red Pass Chautauqua used to set up and be here for a week at Rexland Entertainment. We used What's to get the to Red go Pass Chautauqua? It was traveling entertainment. They had a big tent, had singers and dancers and jugglers and everything else. Like a carnival? Like a... Or circus. Yeah, it was a <laughs> lot of fun. Tell us more about that. That's interesting. <laughs> well, you got to go if your folks had any money that could buy some tickets and go. <gasps> what but did you do there? What? Right? What did you do there? Sat and watched. Oh. Wide-eyed. Tell me what kind Eating of acts did you up. watch? Pardon? What kind of acts were there that you watched? What what sort of entertainment? Oh, people that do all kinds of it's what they do today. They had Chinese people doing the acrobatics, and it was they were hired and they went around and set up in different towns, just like <laughs> the circus used to come too. Well, any more questions? Do you recall the um, train trestle that, that the train trestle that ran through Akron Falls Park off yeah. of East Avenue? Do you My recall? mother used to walk across it to get water from Fisher Spring. It was right by the house where the caretaker lived. And her father ran a tavern in the corner of 
Front Street and East Avenue. She has to walk across that trestle and bring pails of water over for drinking water. She was about eight years old. She went to school right at Five Corners. That's as far as she ever went, eighth grade. My dad was from Grand Island, and I gave both their eighth grade report cards, one to this historical and one to the Grand Islands. Do you recall what year that trestle was, was taken down? I can't tell you that. Do you have any, do you personally have any memory? I never saw, I never saw the trestle. Okay. I've seen pictures of it. Okay. And where did you see the pictures? The Historical Society has them. There's some in the, in the historical book uh, from the Centennial. You can find pictures of it in there. Okay. And Nancy's father has all kinds of articles and pictures on that. There was actually like two towns that uh, was Falkirk or Cement City. And then there was a little open space in Akron, and there was always rivalry there. There was a fight every time two, one guy went over the line too far. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just like it is today. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recall any stories about the, about the park or about that, that area, the train trestle, any, anything like that? Not really. I remember it only when, uh, well, my dad was highway superintendent and supervisor the, uh, from 26 to 34. Mm -hmm. And that's when the park was started with the WPA, and uh, they had a, a, a toboggan slide that started way up on the other side, up by Le Ledge Road, or Skyline Drive now, and right down across the creek and up halfway up the other bank. Took your life in your hands to go down it. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions for the audience? Or? And we, well, here's another question. We see on some uh, older maps of Akron, we see that there was an old Indian cemetery in Akron Falls Park near Fisher Spring. Uh, does that, uh, does cemetery? that? Cemetery? Yeah, an Indian cemetery. Does that sound familiar to you or does that ring a bell? I don't recall that. There was one right by Will Strippet where the peanut was along the peanut. There was a cemetery there that they uncovered. Where right. exactly would that be, John? No, that was a. It was not an Indian cemetery. Oh, I was just say cemetery. Akron's always been a good town. Tell us what you remember about like um, the bowling pin factory. Do you remember that? Which factory? Bowling pin. Oh yeah, well you know, Norm Brewer was a woodsman and he brought in a lot of maple and started making bowling pins here. Could you tell us where that was? Oh, I don't know. In, in the, I'd say in the end of the 30s or 40s, maybe maybe right after World War II. But he okay. sold them all over. I mean, they were wood pins. They had mushroom factory, a plant up there in the old cement works. They grew mushrooms in there and the temperature was always the same, about 52 degrees and it was dark down there and they First class mushrooms, and if you've got copies of the historical, historical uh, news, uh, her, her dad had an article on it, raising the mushrooms. And so where was his bowling pin factory? Up off of Front Street, on, and, and where the houses are back there. Mm -hmm. Facet Avenue goes over, Front Street goes up, comes out up above. That was Falkirk. And we were always integrated here. We always had Indians in town. I worked for you on the farm. You saw them in school. Was, wherever you went, there was, and they're still here. And, uh, and all the, uh, well, the Irish came in right after the Civil War for the cement mines up there. And then the Italians came with the gypsum mines. We did a program on historical Bloomingdale in 1930. Two stores, two cement plant, two gypsum mines and five saloons. <laughs> <laughs> but you look at the young Italian people that are retiring today and it, they've all gone someplace. What do you mean they've all gone someplace? Well, uh, 49 when I started bailing hay on the farm when I came back, I had four boys from Bloomingdale, 13 years old handling them 100-pound bales, loading and unloading and putting them in boxcars down oh. at the jip or the railroad sidings. 
one of our famous ones, Renzo Caparelli. I gave him a scholarship on this stage out here, 1954. And yeah. he just retired two years ago as Chief Executive Officer of Grumman Aircraft on Long Island. He can tell you stories about all the people in Washington who he's on a first name basis with, stuff like that. Donnie Marconi is another one. He's still in the insurance business here. Bobby Favero, he retired as Chief, Chief Officer of uh, Georgia Pacific in Marietta, Georgia. He went when uh, uh, yeah, helps the Parkinson's. I can talk and it stops and I can't say the words. <laughs> You're doing a wonderful but he job. But he moved to uh, Marietta with the company that had the gypsum mine down here. Certainty or? Oh, it was the name uh, Bestwall. No, Bestwall. Bestwall, Certainty, and right. then uh, Georgia Pacific was in there. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the Irish section up there on Cummings. On Cummings Road, do you know a place called Haunted Corners? Where the campground is up there? Leisure Park, yeah, with the Leisure Wood. Well, yeah. I'll tell you about the trestle that was across there over the painted track, it was a low one. And uh, one day I come to town and the road was blocked off and they were working on the trestle. Some enterprising contractor with a big crane moved in and they stole the trestle right in the daytime and hauled it away. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might ask me to prove that. I didn't see it, but I saw them load it, and I saw it going down the road. I didn't know they had took it then. It wasn't, the county had nothing to do with it. Oh, my gosh. But with, uh, for the Stone Corps, the Cummings Cement Works was over there, and that uh, Homer Cummings was Attorney General under Roosevelt from there. And there was this, Nick Burr had a store up there, and there was about 12 houses where people lived, and then they went the Cement Works quit, then the stone quarry moved from back of the school here, over there where the auto auction is now, and all those people lived in there and worked for the stone company. Do you remember Haunted Corners? Haunted Corners? Mm -hmm. oh, that's a new one on me. Okay, do you know Montgomery Corners? The only Montgomery's I knew were lived right next past uh, Country Cottage Cafe, there it was the Montgomery Farm. I. Don't know. I've Would never that have been James Montgomery, the one who helped discover the gypsum? No, that, might, that have might have been who they were named after. Well, the only daughter they had there was a school teacher. But it might have been the same family. I don't know. Okay. Could have been relatives. In 1900, according to the historic books, Akron was self-sufficient. They made their own flour, they made their own barrels for moving cement and everything else. 19, what, 1905, John Price lived just three houses past the, the old library. He was county clerk, Erie County. He walked down to the station, buy the paper, get on the train, 35 minutes later, get off at Exchange Street and walk to the county hall, 35 minutes. You can't do it today with <laughs> the fastest car on the road. Thank you. It's funny. I think, uh, I've always felt that Acker is very cosmopolitan. There's so many nationalities came in here with the mines and that, and then the, there were Swedes in here for that, and then the Polish farmers and the German farmers. It's a... Uh, That's interesting. Where were the Swedes? Well, uh, I knew them from some of the borders that Nat Kratz had. They came from Sweden. <sighs> Looking to make, get to America and make, make the money. <laughs> Some of them stayed and did very well. well I'm not answering the questions that you want to ask. <laughs> well, <laughs> Keep going. Okay. <laughs> I thought you had them all written down here. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming. I really enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed you talking about Akron well, and your past. Has anybody history? talked about wheat ice cream? That's where the Ford Gum plant is. The Sutton started that. They had a plant in Buffalo, one here and one in Elba. Sutton. Uh, I can remember. Uh, 
unload milk there. But you said Sutton's started that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Walt Sutton's father and his brother. Started Wheat's ice cream? Oh, I didn't realize that. Well, the story I got, they walked or hitchhiked a ride on a train or something to Buffalo from Horseheads and it went into business and that's where it wound up. Wow. Okay. Did Wheat's close down before Perry started? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Perry started in 1918. I just learned today that we're sending ice cream to Mexico and China. Oh, my goodness. Mexico and China? <laughs> What's their favorite flavor? <laughs> <laughs> Mark says, I bet it's not American moose. <laughs> I worked for construction when they built this part of the school and on the new the new just swimming pool and that in the back that's now another new one yeah that was a muddy <laughs> muddy winter fall <laughs> but they never stopped and kept on going tell about tell us about the caves and the mines around up by the school and around by the Kratz Zimmerman farm and well the, there, there are tunnels that were there from the cement works there used to be one cave they called Counterfeit Cave, but the earthquake in 29 closed that off. Where was that? It was just in from Tesno Road. Along the, there's a big rock there and you could crawl underneath and go both ways. Somebody said they made counterfeit money up there one time, I don't know. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah, I always knew it was a counterfeit cave. So and that's off Tesno Road? Yeah. The old cement tunnels are still there. I mean, uh, every once in a while some kids get over here and and the firemen have to go in and haul them out. And uh, the big entrance, uh, it's got the doors on it, and uh, one of the farmers up there uh, was on their farm, and they could store their cabbage and potatoes in there. It was always 52 degrees. It never got froze or anything else. It was. Do you know what farm that's on? Uh, where Johnny Ronowitz lived. Right on Five Corners, the gray barns and the house there. That was all part of that farm. You said there was an earthquake? An earthquake? In 1929, I was, we were milking cows in the morning and I was walking with a pail of milk from the cows to into the milk house to dump it in the can. And the can was moving and I was moving. It didn't do a sandwich, but it opened a trench about that wide on the top of the escarpment. Go up off of Scotland, you can still, I can still show it to you up in Crotch's Woods along there where it just sort of opened it up. How deep was the opening? Oh, the wind blew it, it got full of leaves right away. I never knew how, how deep it was. No, we couldn't get in there. It was about that wide. Wow. Are there other memories or other things that uh, you can think of that we need to discuss? I feel like you've got such a wealth of information we've hardly <laughs> tapped yet. Well, there was, let's see. Rempson, Reynolds, and Burroughs up on Falkirk, uh, Akron Produce. And Tell us uh, about Rempson, Reynolds, and Burroughs. You Burrows? could get feed ground there, and you could trade wheat for flour. And in Akron Produce, they ran a lot of dry beans. The ladies picked the dirt and stuff out, and Swiss Mills was a water-powered mill, and then it became electric back in the 20s. When was um, the first one, Reynolds, and I'm sorry, what were the names, the three names? Rempson, Reynolds, and Burroughs. When was that a business? <laughs> that was up uh, where the, the hot dog stand in the brick house is, right there. There was a, a siding in from the railroad track in there to the bring coal and stuff in. I have to ask a, a personal question. Um, Go ahead. I, uh, my family, is, is from Akron originally, and my, the surnames of my family members were Morgans and McMullins. And they were here, you know. The Morgans and the McMullins were from Falker. Right. Irish. Right. <laughs> Did you know any of them? I knew, uh, I knew some of the Morgans. The younger, well, I say yeah, they're older than I am, but I knew who they were. Leo Morgan and Punk Morgan and different, different ones. Yeah. And there was a Morgan farm down off of Cedar Street, 
for a while. The McMullins I never knew. Okay. There, there was one around right after World War II that I ran into, but he never stayed around here. That would have been probably my Uncle Ray, Raymond. Could be. He served in Europe during, the, yep. during World War II. Remember about the park being established as a county park? I was with my father when he was supervisor, what is it, 20, 30, 31? And uh, Don Hawthorne was the superintendent of General Crestone, he was the mayor. And Gene Forrestal, and Mr. we met up, and I was with my dad, and I got taken along up to Sutton's house. And he said, I got all this land and I want to donate it for a park. We never gave him a park until Erie County got a hold of it in uh, around 1940. But the WPA worked down in there and they, the road was built down through the, the bridge that comes across. That's I understand that there, were, there were several men who donated land or gave land besides Louis Sutton. They bought some later on from Mr. Vale but Sutton donated a lot of it. So Sutton and Vale, and do you know of anyone else? No, I, there were, I don't think there was many more. Okay. About how many acres did they give of their land? Probably a hundred. Where the playground is, that was all Sutton's yeah. land. And there was no lake, right? Until Pardon? they built the dam? <clears throat> there was no lake? At the time? When they built the road, they put the dam in and built. There was no lake before that. You're talking about Louis Sutton, who had the Arabian horse farm, correct? That's Edmund, yeah. That was his grandfather. Right. Dave Ross's wife is the Sutton. And Edwin still lives there. That's where he raced the horses. Well, thanks for coming. I really enjoyed you talking about your past memories and your moments in the history of Akron. I thought you'd ask me a lot more questions. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Um, it was very... Thanks for inviting me. Well, thanks for coming. It was very nice meeting you. Things that really come out, uh, if you, you should get Paul Strat.